Oftentimes when I'm putting together explainers or map animations, I have to create some basic infographics. And today I want to show you a cool technique to create the star of the infographic world, the bar graph. This is a really cool technique and you can take what you learn from this tutorial to create your own templates that are extremely powerful. I'm going to show you how you can create a basic bar graph so that you can rig it up so that all you need to do is change an amount in the slider controller bar and it's going to automatically change the bar graph. The animation will be set up and ready to go. You won't have to play with any keyframes. Also, I'm going to be using essential properties so that you can pre-comp this and then duplicate duplicate that pre-comp to create a whole row of bar graphs and then animate them individually. I'm going to make this After Effects template that I put together as well as a Mogurt file that I've created available over on my Patreon page. So a link in the description if you want to go check that out. Speaking of Patreon, I want to give a shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Simon over at the track record on YouTube. Also a big thank you to Joseph Culligan, Samir Mahdi, and Tyson the Keymaster. Today's video is sponsored by Rise. This is a desktop app that is an intelligent time tracker and it's really gonna help you be more efficient with your time and build better, healthier work habits. This is super, super useful for me personally. I work from home 100% of the time. I have to take my kid to school in the morning and then I have to pick him up in the afternoon. So I have a set period of time that I really have to make sure that I focus on my work. And that can be hard when you are your own boss. Rise automatically tracks and categorizes your work activity in real time. And then by the end of the day, you can look at the data and see where all your time went. You can quickly and easily modify the categories. You can make sure that it doesn't track specific tasks. So if you don't want it to track when you're checking your email or looking at the news, you can have it leave out those activities. Use promo code BOONELOVESVIDEO and follow the link in the video description to be the first 1,000 people to get 25% off your first three months with Rise and maximize your productivity today. Rise additionally provides a 14-day free trial so that you can test out the product before buying. Stop wasting your time. Go check it out. I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible to follow. There are a lot of steps, but I'm going to try to break it down step by step. So here we go. I have my After Effects project open and I have this screenshot of the Rise app because I'm going to, you know, try to match the look of these bar graphs here because they're super sexy and I want to match the colors and just the whole look here. So I'm going to create a new comp. And I want to create a vertical comp because I'm going to be making one a vertical bar graph that I can then uh, pre-comp and then use and duplicate a bunch of times to create like a whole like bar, group of bar graphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, 1080 by 1920, kind of like the reverse HD vertical. And I'll call this bar graph. To be able to place things precisely, I'm going to use rulers and guides. So I'm going to view guides, view rulers. And now I can just grab and drag a ruler down. But if I right click, I can actually edit the pixel position. And if I want to place this in the middle of the comp, um, we remember that the height of the comp is 1920. So we just take half of that, which is 960. That's going to place that guide right in the middle. And the same thing for this one. I can do 540, which is half of 1080, the width of our comp. I'm going to place two more. I'm going to put one at zero pixels, which is the top of the comp and then one at 1920, which is the very bottom of the comp. And now I'm gonna to go to the view menu, make sure that it's set to snap to guides, and also I'm going to lock the guides so that I don't ac accidentally move them. Now, I'm gonna grab my pen tool so I can draw my path, and I just want the path to be a stroke element. So I'm gonna turn off the fill. You do that by clicking on the actual word fill, don't click on the color palette. And the stroke is fine right now, I'll style it a little bit later. Now I'm just going to draw a quick path consisting of two points here. Uh, 100 pixels is a lot. I'm actually going to turn that down to 50. I'll rename the layer bar graph. And with the selection tool, I'm going to hit V for the selection tool. Now I'm going to grab the path here, hold shift to click on one particular point, And then I'm going to make sure this one's in the center. It'll snap to those guides. This one's at the bottom. So it's just going to be a simple like animate up from the bottom here. Maybe I do want that to be 100 just so we can see what's going on. To quickly animate these, all I need to do is go down and hit this Add Menu button and add a Trim Paths Animator. And this is real simple. You open this up and all you have to do is edit the end parameter. So I added a keyframe. I'm going to bring that out to one second. And then I'm going to bring the end parameter down to zero at the beginning. So now I have this animation. But it's animating from the top down. What I can do is go into the Shape Group and there's a little button here that is the path direction. I click this, it reverses the path. That's pretty great. And now I can just quickly add some easy ease, open up the graph editor, 
and move the handle so that it has a little bit of, looks a little bit better there. I could theoretically, if I have this keyframe here, I could go to the second keyframe and so let's say I want it to be 50%, I can just move that second keyframe to 50, but that's really inefficient. I wanna set this up so they can be like a template that you can just use. You'll have an effect, like a slider control effect that you can just put in a number and the animation will automatically go. You don't even have to mess with the animation. So to do that, it's pretty simple. So what I can do for that is I am going to add another trim pads animator. Now look how easy this is. If I move the end parameter, that's gonna give me my final amount. So it's 33, if I want it to be 33, that animation is still gonna go from zero to 100, but now it only goes to 33% of the path. So that's how you do that. And now I can grab this and go to effect controls, or sorry, I can go to effects and presets and search for slider control, it's just an expression controller. Drop that on your layer. And I'm gonna call this amount. And then I'll go back to the second trim pads animator here, grab the property pick whip, connect that to the slider. Now you see it disappears because this is set to zero. So if I set it to like 75, or if I just move it around, now you'll see uh, that this is controlling our amount. Very cool. Now just to keep things neat, I'm gonna rename these. We'll call the shape bar graph. We'll call the first trim pads uh, the animator or animation. And then the second trim pads is the amount and I'll put that in all caps just so I know what's going on. Now if you look over at the reference here, they have a background element that is showing you, it, it's a quick way to visualize what is 100% because with my setup right now, you can't really see what 100% is. If I bring this down below 100, it still looks like a line with no reference. So I need to create that background element. So for that, I'm simply gonna duplicate these elements so I can just group them, select them all, group shapes. Now I have this shape group. I'll rename this again, I'll call it bar graph. And now I'm gonna hold control and hit D to duplicate that. And I'm gonna make sure that this one's below the group. And don't accidentally put it in the group because that'll mess everything up. I'll rename this one and call it background. So now I'm gonna open up this shape group and the way I'm gonna animate this is that my background's gonna animate on as well. You could obviously remove those animators and just have it on all the time if that's what the look you're going for. However, I want, I want mine to animate on at the same time, so the background's gonna animate on from zero to 100 at the same time that my bar graph will animate on to zero to whatever value I set in that slider. And if you want those to be offset, you can animate them separately, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna keep everything nice and neat so I only have two keyframes that controls everything. So I don't need my amount slider for this, for the background, because it's gonna go to 100. So I'm gonna delete that trim pads animator. I do want this animation. This one is animating this background on as well. However, and actually before, so you can see what's going on, I'm gonna turn off bar graph, and now we have this one, and I'm gonna change it to this uh, grayish color. So I'm gonna grab the background shape group, make sure you grab that shape group, and now I can click on the color palette of the stroke, and I can just bring the brightness to like 15 or something. And now you can see we have darkened it up to this gray. So now if I turn the bar graph back on, our bar graph is white, and our background is that grayish color. Now I want, uh, we can really see what's going on if I bring down the amount here and I keep them both. So now we have this little animation here. However, we have a lot of keyframes. So you can see I have these keyframes for the bar graph animation and I have the keyframes for the background animation. If I just hit the U key, you're gonna see both of those. So that's kind of redundant. Again, if you don't want to offset the animation of those, that's fine. What you can do is just get rid of these keyframes and then property pick whip the background to the animation of the main bar graph. And now they will animate on together and you don't have to worry about too many keyframes. Now I'm ready to change this white to this uh, gradient color here. So for that, I'm gonna open the shape groups back up and close the subgroup so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna grab the bar graph. And now I can go up to stroke. I'm gonna click on the name. You'll see I have two gradient options here. I have linear and gradient. I'm gonna go with linear. I'm gonna make sure that the blend mode and the opacity set and I'll click on here. And that adds, if I open this up, it adds, if I go to the bar graph, it add, added a gradient stroke here. And if you zoom in, you can see there's a little handle over here. So the gradient has, oh, you can't really see what's going on here. I gotta bring the bar graph to 100. So the gradient has a start point and an end point. If you open up gradient stroke, you'll see those parameters here. And they have coordinates. They have a Y and an X for both. If I click on the actual element, you can see those and I can manually move them. However, they don't snap. 
So what I want to do is um, I want to move those manually to where I want them. So we're going to have the endpoint. Let's maybe bring the start point down here. And I want the start point to be at the very bottom right here. And you can see that with the coordinates, what I'm going to want to do is I want the x-axis to be 0. And I want this, you can, if you can tell, it's close to half the size of the comp. And that's, again, because it's going, it's starting here. The coordinates here are set to 0 in the middle, like where the anchor point is. So all I need to do to perfectly place this is take half the pixel number of the comp, which is, in fact, 960. And now for the endpoint, I want that also to be 0 on the x-axis, because this is all going straight up. And then for this, it's going to be 0, because it's starting 0, 0. So now I have this perfect gradient here, starting here, going up to here. I want to change the colors of this. So I'll click, there's colors here. I'll click on Edit Gradient. And right down here is Color. You have the Color Stop here and Color Stop here. So I'm going to click on this one, grab the Color Picker, and now I'm going to mouse over. You can see this is for the top. So I want this to be this pink color over here. So I'll grab the pink color. Not perfect, but now I'm going to select this one over here, grab the color picker, and I'll go with this deep purple. And now check it out. I'm going to change the amount here. Let's set this to 75. All right, now let's take a look at this on transparency. Okay, I'm going to go back and uh, just quickly change the styling of the background. Maybe, maybe we can bring the opacity down. So we'll go to transform and uh, bring the opacity down to maybe 75. Now, I obviously want to duplicate this and use it a bunch of times in a pre-comp, and the best way to go about that is to use essential properties. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab the layer, hit E, and I want to be able to use this as a pre-comp and quickly adjust uh, the value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the slider here. I hit the keyboard shortcut E to bring up the effects, which is my slider control. And now I'm going to right click on the slider. And at the very bottom, it says add property to essential graphics. So I'm going to do that. That's going to launch this essential graphics panel. And if you've ever created Mogurt templates for Adobe Premiere Pro, that's what this is all about. In fact, uh, maybe I'll create a Mogurt here to see if that works. So I'm just going to call this branding. Let's call it Boone's Bar Graph. I can edit the range here, which is perfect. It's set from 0 to 100. That's all I need. I don't want it to go above that, or I don't want it to go in the negatives. And now check this out. This is controlling it here. Super, super cool. Uh, I can have it default. So let's say I'll have it default at 100. Now, what is the big deal with this? Well, if I go in here, let's create a new comp. So let's make like a 4K comp, and I'll call it infographic. Now, I'm going to grab that bar graph pre-comp. I'm going to drag that in here. And if I open this up, check this out, Essential Properties, Amount. So now I can quickly control the amount. I've also got my bar graph here. If I move this down, animation stays in. Super awesome. This starts at the very bottom, so I can go to Window, Align, and I can just align this to the bottom right here. And now check it out. Got this. And what's very cool about this is when I duplicate it, these will all be individual. So if I duplicate it a couple of times, let's just do that. Now I'm going to grab one, bring it over here, grab another, bring it over here. And now we can grab all of them, distribute them. We're going to keyword search for amount. And now I can quickly adjust the amounts here. Just like that. Now we've got some cool looks. Uh, now I'm going to go back and let's mess with some keyframes here. So we'll make this like a five second animation or make it four just for tutorial purposes, timing purposes. I'm going to grab the keyframes here, copy, paste, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse. And now that's going to give us an animation out. So it'll go and then I'll animate back out, animate on. I also want to go and I want to make this a, uh, I'm going to zoom in here so I can see. I'm going to type in cap and you can see the line caps here of both the, the bar graph and the background. I want to change this to round. There we go. Now we've got a classic. Cool. Now if I go back to my infographic, check it out. They all updated. Very cool. And what's really cool is I can quickly stagger some of these. This is really a great tutorial because again, if you learn the techniques that I'm teaching you here, you can take it and expand on it and create some like insanely cool stuff that's going to be as customizable as you want it to be. All right, so there you go. Really cool technique for creating bar graphs in Adobe After Effects. Again, 
you can take this idea and run with it and create some really, really cool stuff. I'd love to see what you create. If you wanna share something with me, just link that down in the comments section. If you have any questions, throw those down there as well. And again, if you wanna follow along with the journey uh, and join in on the After Effects Fund, I have a Patreon page. Go check that out, link in the video description. Don't forget to follow that link to check out Rise, the time tracker app. And if you're interested, use promo code BoonlasVideo. And I'll see you in the next one.